Over every mountain there is a path, although it may not be seen from the valley. What is the path to CBI projection? Take a wrong turn in the mountains and you might be lost. Take a wrong turn on your CBI route and your confidential information might become public. Our guides to provide directions in the world of CBI are Sophia Danenberg of Boeing and Michael Boucher of Crowell & Morning. Michael, can you define CBI? In, in the U.S., we uh, refer to CBI as information that has three characteristics. Uh, one, somebody owns it, so it's proprietary data. Two, it's confidential, uh, meaning that the owner has taken some steps to keep the information out of the public. And three, uh, if you disclose the information, it will result in some kind of significant or substantial harm to the owner of the information. Okay, Sophia, what kind of CBI issues do you encounter at Boeing? Well, at Boeing, we have to protect a lot of different types of information. Um, of course, we are a defense company, so we have to comply with regulations such as ITAR to protect military and defense-sensitive information. But we also have our own confidential business information as well as supplier information that we need to protect. Industry always advocates that um, CBI protection helps innovation. Can you explain that a bit? Um, well, of course, if you've spent a lot of uh, research and development time and resources um, to create a new product, um, businesses need to be, be able to find a way to recoup some of those. For Boeing, it's really important that suppliers are able to innovate. Um, we do some chemical development, but most of our um, advances in, in chemical technology and materials technology, as well as a lot of the substitution that we do for um, environmental reasons and for regulatory reasons, um, is actually driven by the supplier. The duration of CBI, that varies around the globe. Uh, sometimes it's a few years, sometimes it's even decades. Is that an important factor for CBI? Uh, it's, it's very important, um, not just the duration, but the ability of the government to protect that information, um, how much uh, businesses are able to trust that the government will keep it confidential so that we don't have a situation where the supplier, for example, doesn't want to place something on the market and could possibly um, cause a situation where a product can't be maintained. If industry determines that their interest will be harmed because of lack of data protection, uh, they might decide not to place a substance or a chemical or a product on the market. Um, what can industry and authorities do to circumvent this? Um, certainly, if it's a very large market, like China or the European Union, then, and a large volume of chemical, then the chemical companies, I think, work very closely with the authorities to come to a solution and make sure that the information is protected. However, if it's a small volume chemical or a specialty chemical, then you can have a situation where the manufacturer chooses simply not to put it on the market. And then I think it's really important for the downstream users to get involved. And so it's important for those industries to come forward and to also work with the authorities and find a way that they can um, obtain the chemicals that they need for their products. Perfect. Michael, you'd like to add something to this? Uh, the preferred solution in most places, in, in, in my experience, is to make a clear distinction, if possible, in the law between confidentiality and the use of data. Because in my experience, our chemical company clients don't necessarily object to making, for example, health and safety data on chemicals confidential. They don't object to that. What they object to is spending lots of money to develop the health and safety database and then giving it away to competitors who then turn around and use the data to put competing products on the market. So on the one hand, uh, uh, industry wants to protect certain information. On the other hand, public has the right to know. In uh, the US, you have the Freedom of Information Act. How difficult is it to strike a balance between industry and public in these cases? Uh, again, I think it depends on where, you're, where you are in the world. In the US, I don't actually feel that we've had a lot of difficulty striking a balance. Uh, certainly with the Tosca amendments now, we have much more clarity about what information is, is going to be in, entitled uh, presumptively to confidential treatment, uh, what information will always be public, and, and for all the information in between that may or may not be confidential, what you need to do to ensure that it, it is confidential. So we have, we've, we've drawn lines and it, it does, hasn't seemed to be too painful with one exception, and that is chemical identity information. There's still a lot of um, push and pull uh, between you know, certain uh, interest groups and, and industry and, uh, about exactly when chemical identities 
uh, should be made uh, available to the public. In the US, the Laudermack Act will change the information requirements uh, and the reporting requirements, basically. Um, how will that affect industry? The comments that I'm receiving from our clients is uh, that they're having uh, really the same kind of problem that EPA is having. Uh, uh, there have long been uh, requirements for confidential business information at EPA that implement the Freedom of Information Act. The difference between today and prior years is that uh, EPA had limited resources, so they would take the approach that companies would make confidential business information claims, and then they would return to the issue of justifying those claims or substantiating those claims only when the information was actually requested by somebody in the public. And that made sense uh, when both companies and EPA have limited resources to dedicate to these issues. But I think the biggest change is now everybody knows that when you make a confidential business information claim, again, unless the information is automatically secret and doesn't need to be substantiated, you know up front you're going to be asked a laundry list of questions. You're going to have to answer those questions. You're going to have to answer them every time up front. And that's a tremendous amount of work, both for, especially for companies, but also for EPA. That's what I'm hearing from companies is tra training people and putting more staff and more resources on these CBI issues so that they can be managing them on a daily basis. Thank you very much for sharing your useful information and experiences on CBI. It almost seems that climbing to the rooftop of the world is easier than being on top of your CBI issues. Only some of us can achieve both. They master the CBI issues and they reach the summit of the Mount Everest.